everyone, this is Lori Anderson, contributor for FreedomOutpost.com, as well as host for Resurrect Republic RTR Truth Radio Broadcast. As many of you have come to me, and we have been trying to figure out and find out what is going on with the creator of Resurrect the Republic, that would be Thomas Lacavera Stewart. We do know that he was arrested in December of 2016 and it had to do with the situation that happened in Burns, Oregon. I have with me this evening Tom's wife, Lori, and she is going to explain to us what is going on and keep us up to date as to the situation that is currently going on with Tom and the possibility of other topics being covered as well. Welcome, Lori. How are you doing this evening? Good, Lori. How are you? Doing well. Thank you very much. So, do you want to explain um, for the new listeners, uh, explain to them, I do know that a lot of the old listeners, they already know this, but one week before Tom was actually picked up, he had announced on the radio show that was on RBN Network at the time, he had announced that he was headed to Nevada to cover the Bundy trials, and um, I found that a bit interesting, didn't you? I did until I found out when they had the warrant issue. The warrant was issued in September, and he was arrested in December. Um, but the FBI had not contacted Thomas uh, at in any time, and in court, the FBI was admonished for not talking to him before or letting him know that there was a warrant out for his arrest. Mm -hmm. um, and why it took so long to arrest him, I don't know, because he was out in the open and never hid where he was. Right, right. And it was not hard to get a hold of Tom. All they had to do was call into the show. Or call him, correct. You know, uh, they, they knew how to get a hold of him. Yeah, that was one of the questions that a lot of people were wondering about because allegedly this happened all the way in, in uh, the situation with uh, Burns, Oregon. What was the date um, that they said that, that this offense occurred? Do you remember? The day, be the day before Lloyd passed away uh, was mine. Uh, was the uh, January 25th. And that was when, of uh, 2015, 14? Correct. 2015. 2015. Correct. Okay, so all the way from that day, almost a year later, or you said the warrant came out when? They, they said it came out in uh, September. Okay, so nine months, <laughs> nine months later um, that they allege that, you know, he's such a danger to society um, that they waited nine whole months before um, anything happened as far as the warrant was concerned. And then they waited another because in September was when the warrant was. And Thomas was picked up um, December, 6th. December the 6th of 2016. So obviously, um, they weren't too concerned about him being a threat to society. So one of the concerns has been throughout this course of events is that he has not been allotted to get out of jail in order to be able to help his own case. Is that accurate? Okay, did they did they issue him any bond whatsoever, or did they refuse to issue him bond because of him being a quote-unquote threat to society? They have, they have refused at saying he's a threat to society. Okay. So that's kind of uh, interesting, to say the least, when uh, they waited a year if he was such a threat, and they uh, apparently were not uh, concerned at that point in time. 
Okay, so now let's go into um, what is he being charged with, what is the current situation with Tom, and um, what you would like the people to know about Tom. Currently, well, first he's being charged with felon in possession, which is under, I believe, <coughs> excuse me, it is under a statute that is for the sales of firearms, which he was not involved in selling. What had happened was there was a gun in a room where he was leading the Burns area, and um, the state police had come into the room to talk to him about the children that were on the refuge. There was an issue at that time that people were fearful for the FBI coming in and killing everybody there, and that there were children and everyone was worried, and I believe that's why the state police were talking to him. Mm -hmm. um, they issued him a ticket and let him go. They never booked him, they never fingerprinted him, never took a picture, never took him in, just gave him a ticket which was not even in his name, never looked for ID, nothing. Um, okay, so, so to make sure this is accurate, this weapon that they found was not on him. This weapon correct. was in a room which was fully accessible to other individuals as well. And of course also accessible to the uh, state police that were there as well. Do you know um, if uh, where that weapon was allegedly found at? Somewhere in the room. I'm not sure where it was. And um, no, I did not, when he came back, I did not ask him a lot of questions. I did not, this is my opinion, which I have every right to, right. I did not agree with what was going on in Burns as far as how it was done. Mm -hmm. I agreed that something needed to be done. Mm -hmm. So I did not want to get involved in Mount Huron or Oregon at all, which I am now. Um, so I did not ask him any questions and did not want to know any of the information surrounding what was going on. Mm -hmm. I specifically did that because I did not want to know, and if I was questioned, I would not know. Right. What I do know is from court cases, from attending the court trials in Oregon for the last four, and from what I've heard in Thomas's court case, that's pretty much all I know, which is not a lot. Um, purposely doing that because um, it's, I've been in Oregon, and I have left now, I was in Oregon for several months, and it is a very odd situation up there, the way everyone is handling this issue. Mm -hmm. So I kept to my, I don't want to know a lot of information. Mm -hmm. um, and that's good advice to, for a lot of people. Uh, what I do know about the case now is Thomas has had quite a few status hearings month, once every month. Um, at this point, he has been offered a plea deal, and he has accepted it. Um, this is something that Thomas has accepted based on what he knows about the law via his father being a judge and his brother being a lawyer. He grew up in the legal system. Right. And at this point, he's been in over eight months, and he is sick. He has Lyme disease. He's been in solitary probably all of that time for an exception of maybe two months. Um, it's wearing on him, and they have been doing a number on him while he's in there. The lawyers, the prosecutor, the private investigators, everyone that's coming in has been doing a number, and any of the information we've learned since he's been in, it's very hard for him to understand, because if anyone knows of anyone that's in jail, you have limited access to them unless you are their attorney. Mm -hmm. I, I am Thomas's next friend, but I have very limited access, just like you would. Right. Um, the courts are very different. I understand them. I'm not going to say they're corrupt because I understand them. Mm -hmm. So, going from his arrest now, that's where Thomas is at the moment and what he is uh, deciding to do in, in the direction that he's going. Mm -hmm. And you know, individuals, uh, and I've said this before, nobody can really um, blame individuals for taking pleas because they know 
and they see that uh, anything resembling um, a fair and impartial trial really truly is not going to happen. And, you know, just leaving people within the um, confines of solitary confinement for such a long period of time is considered cruel and unusual punishment. But on yeah. top of that, you know, a lot of people whom normally would not uh, take a plea deal do so, and they do so under threat, duress, and coercion. And they use those solitary confinement cells in order to not only isolate them within the jail, to make it very difficult to be able to defend yourself in any court, and to not be able to have a fair trial. Now, one of the disturbing trends, you know, is that they are denying bail to individuals who are not charged with capital crimes. Um, there is no victim whatsoever in Thomas's case, and in hundreds of thousands of other cases across the United States of America, but they are for sure denying bail to these individuals, but they are allowing bail to individuals who are charged with murder. And that is very frustrating, and a lot of people um, don't seem to understand, but, you know, uh, that was legalized in DAA 2012, indefinite detention of American citizens without charge or trial. Um, they could even not charge him, according to that uh, cute little thing that they passed through uh, Congress, and, um, and get by with it, as long as they put that fictitious tag of a possible terrorist or suspected terrorist. This is one of the reasons that I believe, and this is my personal opinion, but I believe this really wholeheartedly when when Harry Reid came out in uh, 2014 and he was calling the, the protesters at the Bundy Ranch domestic terrorists, I think that was the whole purpose behind that, was to try to get it to where they could be charged with that for the simple fact if, if that is put out there, and enough propaganda is put out there, then people perceive that, and it makes it okay to indefinitely detain an American citizen without charge or trial. Do you, do you, how do you feel about that? Do you think that that's kind of um, the, the rationale behind it? Um, absolutely. It's a little bit different. I kind of believe that line, but I've also been in court in Oregon with the last four uh, from out here and actually heard from Brett Singh, who was the director of the FBI over uh, Mal here, mm -hmm. say out of his mouth that the goal of the FBI was to get as many convictions out of this as possible. And he, as you know, he worked hand in hand with Daniel Love mm -hmm. to do everything with the Bundy Ranch. He was not involved to believe in Mal here, but I'm sure he had his air hockey stick staying a love type out there at Mill here. Mm -hmm. But I did hear from his mouth, and the prosecution agreed, that yes, they were trying to get as many convictions as possible. So if they're going to get convictions, they can't keep these guys and hold them indefinitely. Right. Uh, so that is their goal. So as long as they can keep this in the public eye and do what Judge Navarro is doing, is, is keeping the circus going or the play or the act or whatever you want to call it going on in Nevada, uh, that is something they want to do to just deter or to put out their fear factor or whatever they're doing in their propaganda to the people. They want to continue that and make sure as many people know that they're going to come after you. Um, they're doing that with the Facebook when I can't remember what they're calling everybody, the uh, the unconvicted. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the sta statement that they're saying about the Facebook. Um, unindicted co-conspirator. Mm-hmm. So if you've even liked a, a Facebook post or an un, unindicted co-conspirator, conspirator, which is kind of funny, um, you know they they they're watching everybody. They're doing everything they can to intimidate you. They're 
putting their facts, I saw their Facebook post that they put up, and it wouldn't pass the second grade English class because your teacher would have told you you can't take snippets from everything and put it the way you wanted to. You had to take the, the snippets that you're putting into a paper, and it has to be in context, and it has to have the same similar meaning. They're just taking Facebook posts, one may be from one year and one may be from another year, and they're putting them together saying, well, these are the statements of this person and making a story out. Mm -hmm. So, right. you know, I've seen and that with a lot of cases, too. Not only will they do that, but they will leave out pages before it, uh, and I'm talking about a different case right this second, but I've seen it done. And Facebook itself, um, will admit that they will not authenticate um, any Facebook post for court. Right. And so if you can't have somebody to authenticate it, then how are they being allowed to get by with it? And, you know, that's another um, situation in and of itself that is a problem. All across the union, it is really, truly a problem because if you can't authenticate and you can't prove that that person posted that, whether it looks like it's them or not is irrelevant. You know, you have to be able to prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that somebody posted something, and you have to also be able to prove that it's not manipulated, that it hasn't been photoshopped. I mean, they can do some really crazy things with video even. Um, I had had a previous discussion with um previous Detective Gordon Martinez about that, and he told me that, that over there that they were not even allowed to use photos or videos as evidence, um, usually because it can be manipulated, it can be altered, um, it has to go through some serious scrutiny before they're allowed to use it. And just like what you're saying now, they're, they're taking something from one year and from another year in a little tiny snippet and they're not doing the whole context of the conversation or even if there was a conversation they're using emails that went out in mass claiming this connects the people when they can't even prove that they read those emails all right so this is really really a serious situation for the whole of the american people and of course it feeds into that um, private prison system and them making a lot of money off of people sitting there. But the message that they're trying to send is don't you dare stand up and speak out against us. Don't you dare expose Hillary Clinton's Uranium One deal that is taking um, uranium from the Malheur area. Don't you dare expose that what we did to the Hammonds was intentional in order to kick them off the land so that uranium deal that's linked to the Clinton Foundation can come through and the different items like that. And uh, so I apologize. Go ahead and, and uh, continue with what you were saying, Lori. Well, that's exactly true. Um, I've done a, a lot of auto research over the last couple of months, and I found evidence of, of the bonds behind the scenes. They have three bonds behind the scenes for their uh, imprisonment. And uh, the judge for the Hammonds had actually killed the bonds and knocked all the money out and they came back and reissued bonds on them. So they, you know, the judge had actually killed the case. And I saw evidence of that where they went in and, and reopened it. And they should not have. Um, and they know that, but no one else knows that. I've talked to Thomas's lawyer about this. He's the one, well, it's not Thomas Robert Lacabera, it's Thomas Robert Lacabera, the entity that he's the lawyer for. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll explain that later. Okay. But I talked to the entity's lawyer and said, look, these things are not correct. And he comprehends and knows what I'm saying, or I have given the information so he could gain the knowledge. And um, continually, this man that was assigned by the judge for the entity, um, refuses to abide by the judge's orders. He continually goes after my husband, who I am an ex-friend for, and if you don't understand what an ex-friend for, please research it. Um, continually steps on my toes as an ex-friend. Uh, continually threatens that he can take the power of attorney for the next friend away from me. Um, continually 
continually does things that he should not be doing and continually asks for Thomas to step into the Thescope. Uh, and that's what Thescope means, stepping into something for another, which he's, they're trying to get him to step in for the entity. Mm-hmm. And um, in fact, I talked to the, the attorney for the entity today and gave him the information so he has the knowledge. Um, all these things were set up in a manner, and I hope some people are understanding me. All these things were set up, and a country was set up so that they could operate and manage through the bankruptcy and the debt of the United States. It's all legal. It's all 100% above board. They, they put it out there. There's nothing they're doing wrong. It's just if you don't know what they're doing, you don't understand it, and you're angry. And Thomas doesn't understand it completely, whereas most of the listeners of this radio show, a lot of them, have had the last eight months to see the, the information and research that's come out, do understand it a little bit better now. Uh, so we have to keep that in mind. Um, I have continually, behind the scenes, talked to this lawyer for the entity, which I will continually call him that, and uh, will not talk to anyone else. I have talked to them in private through the court and through the prosecution and through the Justice Department. Uh, the only way I will speak to them is on the private side, mm-hmm. and um, that might be something that a lot of people don't understand. Uh, there's still some things that I have to keep private. It doesn't mean, <clears throat> excuse me, that it's secret to you and I. It means it's private between myself, Thomas, and the court, right. so that they retain that honor. It's a dance when you're in the court. The court is a play. It's an act. Mm-hmm. They're actors. Uh, Judge Anna Brown looked at us and was right next to me and called us spectators. You only have spectators when you're witnessing the gladiators or a court or the play. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just keep my mouth shut, Lori. You should be proud of me. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, you know, these are the things that hopefully people understand how I'm speaking. And if you need to clarify, Lori, ask me questions. But the FBI has been respectful after Thomas was arrested. Uh, They do, I am quite sure, know what I know because they have seen the orders for all transcripts and conversations that I have with Thomas or through the courts to go straight to them, and that's through Bretzing. Mm -hmm. Um, Bretzing is strictly behind this, Um, and he has retired from the FBI is now head of a security firm for a private company. Well, another private company, should I say. So, um, I'm going to ask for words right now, but it's, it's so complicated what's going on, but we have been talking about the FBI and what they're doing, and this is part of it. The FBI, most of the people, other than 20-year-old kids that we do Facebook, the upper level and the process do understand what's going on, have called us a virus, um, and they're doing everything they can so the truth does not come out and that someone does not come into that court that understands how the court works. Um, and they're doing that through the lawyers for the entities. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, ask me a question because I know I'm confusing people. Well, would you like to um, explain uh the private side versus the public side. The private side is when you talk to the court and you talk to the court on paper. You go to the court, usually via in camera. You have your paperwork. First, you have to make an appearance on paper. You can only speak, the courts speak in the language of the dead. They're necromancers we were warned about in Deuteronomy. You can always speak to them on paper. Anything that's not on paper, when you go into the court and you're speaking, all you hear is the wah, wah, wah from the Charlie Brown teacher. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense and it's not recorded. Even if you say on the record, it's not on the paper, it's not in court. Right, and they don't see it. They can't see it. It doesn't exist if it's not on paper, correct? Correct. So what I do is I go and speak to the court. I made an appearance for the court. I made an appearance for Thomas and told them I don't know who this entity is and I don't know who the federal government is because there are several U.S. governments Mm -hmm. and I don't know which one it is, please identify it. Um, You know, and this is is the knowledge that most people don't have or they're afraid to do. I'm not afraid to do it because 
I'm going to the judge in honor, keeping her at the heart, her in honor, in honor saying, here, here's, here are the facts, here's what's going on, here's who we are. And then I gave her a set of paperwork that outlines each detail of what's going on and what our position was, which I'm not going to go into that because it's right. private. Right. Um, and that's one of the things you do when you go into private is you keep it private. You have to act a certain way. You don't go out and raise the flag of war and march around the prison saying, I'm going to protest and I'm not trying to offend anybody. But that's public. Mm -hmm. Public's when you go out and say, here's what happened in court. Here's what we're doing. Here's what we need. Here's all this. And you do it right there when you're standing in front of the judge. Mm -hmm. You show the paperwork that you're doing. I don't show the paperwork that I'm doing. In fact, I insisted quietly that Thomas stay in solitary for the time that he had the paperwork I sent in. Um, there was a period of time he needed to stay there because that paperwork did not need to be seen by other prisoners. Mm -hmm. um, and that is private. Private is strictly private. You stay quiet. You do not go out and mouth off or say things, and, that, and please bear with me on my words, I'm trying not to be offensive to people. Um, this is hard for all of us. Um, you have to be what the word means, private. You don't go out and post crazy things, you stay quiet, you stay private, and there'll be a time when you can talk. To a certain point, some things will always remain private. Um, when you're going public, which I am right now, I'm able to speak to you, I'm able to answer some of the facts, some of the questions that you have that everybody knows that, that everybody can see. But the private side does not get seen. It's why you hear things happening in court and people can't prove it because they tell the court, which I have told the court, it's private. It's between you and I. It's between Thomas and you. And this is how we take care of our business. Um, every living man, and from here on out, man means man or woman. You're all grown up. That is what term man means every man has a right to stand up to the judge and present their case and that's what we did to the judge in uh, Oregon mm -hmm. and tried to get some of the defects in the case corrected since the attorney for the entity um, may be incompetent, may be scared, um, may be corrupt, I don't know, I don't know the man. I'm not going to assume, but he's not doing the job that the judge has asked him to do because he's court appointed for that entity. Right, and then so. a lot of times too, let me just add this for the listeners, a lot of times too, the, the attorneys that are appointed will go along with things that they don't even agree with necessarily because they are scared of, uh, I've, I've had one attorney, for instance, Lori, tell me, that um, uh, they weren't going to do something because they didn't want to piss off the judge. And mm -hmm. so their concern is that if they piss off the judge, they're not going to get more cases sent their way. Um, and that's another issue that's a problem. Well, one of the things that I've done is I've, I've told the man, not the attorney. Right. I've told the man mm -hmm. that I'm going to do everything I can, and there is there are ways to keep everybody's honor and respect to handle these issues. We're all grown-ups, and there are ways to handle this, and the judge is quite apt at knowing this, as well as the Department of Justice. They've gone through these cases before um, to keep their honor and uh, not dishonor them. I'm not saying that. Um, my house, uh, my temple, my body, my house. Right. Their court has offended me greatly. And I've come to them with respect and honor and have not even asked for an apology. This is something people need to hear. Um, my house has been offended. They had they went to me with twenty five men plus with guns, long guns, pointed at me, trying to make me fear them, and possibly trying to kill me and harm and destroy my house, my temple. Um they also did not have the proper paperwork. I've seen the paperwork, and any judge, should I put that type of paperwork in, would refuse it. Mm -hmm. The paperwork I've seen from the judge on the indictment, it's the same thing that you had, it was not paperwork that's filed by a court at all. It, right. it, it was embarrassing. So this court, or house, has offended my house. I have gone into their house in Oregon. I was respectful. I had an incident with one of the judges where I waited after court 
went to her assistant, talked to the assistant, she heard me, made my complaint quite clear, and the next day the judge came in and made an apology. I went in at the court to the same assistant with the same vigor and said, please tell the judge, thank you, with all the respect possible, with the same amount of energy and force that I said, this will not happen. So I know this works, and you have to know how to treat the judges and how to treat their houses, but they disrespected mine. Therefore, mm -hmm. I'm going into their house, privately sending them the correspondence that needs to be sent, to say this is what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Now, they're still uh, offending me, and still in dishonor with me, but I am trying to keep them in honor, because if you go into their house, and put them in dishonor, you're going to harm them. Um, they have not, well, they have harmed me by taking Thomas, but they have not done the things they've done to others because I have gone with the honor and respect. Um, it could have been a lot worse. Um, one of the things that's going private was because I could harm not only myself, but them. And that was not my intent. Right. My intent was to uh, correct the record and to do what needed to be done to settle the accounts. All kinds of commercial and their accounts behind the scenes. And that's what the attorney or the entity's job is to do. He is to go and settle the accounts for the commercial crime. Um, you cannot charge a living man with a crime of the statute. And I will try to find, um, sorry, I had it written down for you today, the court case that um, actually said we are not, um, living man is, uh, there's no jurisdiction over living man for the uh, uh, statute. Mm -hmm. Well, while you're looking for that, um, I also know that the reporter, uh, Michael Emery, was in court today at 9 a.m. for sentencing. Yes. And the sad thing is, is uh, I, we discussed this last night, it's been very hard to get information on individuals other than the uh, one, two, the 19 in Nevada, pretty much. And Michael Emery, for those of, of the listeners that don't know, he is the one who recorded what was going on with the three percenters, what was going on in Malheur. Um, very, very humble individual. And he was also picked up by the feds. It's, it seems like it is a trend uh, for individuals who are independent investigative reporters or people who report on the truth that they have gone after them with a vengeance and they've done so, um, in my opinion, because it has destroyed over time and proven that um, <clears throat> mainstream media is not only a farce, but lie to the people and manipulate the people through propaganda. And, you know, I, I know you remember this, Lori, when, when Tom and I had covered this, the Jade Helm 15. Well, the concern with the Jade Helm 15 with me was not so much the drill itself, was the mastering the human domain, the seventh word fighting function, which all exposes really what mainstream media and and the other narratives are for is completely controlling the people. And so with people like Tom, or, or people like Michael Emery, or people even like myself, or yourself, or, or individual indiv independent investigative reporters uh, from all around the spectrum, no matter what side of the spectrum that they are on, they have stopped uh, the propaganda machine that is actually being used as a seventh war fighting function. And uh, so this is really serious, everyone, 
Um, so have you gotten any updates as to what happened with Michael Emery? Yes. And before that, I want to say about Michael Emery, he was actually helping people set up in their area a small media service so that he was setting up like the old-fashioned newspapers that on the Internet. He was showing them how to set things up like they were doing. I think it's TVOI is, is their brand name. They were trying to help people do that around the country and, and around the world. Um, the second thing I want to say about the reason why they were, you don't hear anything, is I know that his wife, like myself, was put in a uh, sense of fear, constantly has people sending threatening messages, uh, following them. You know, we, we for a long time had to stay hidden. We won't tell people where we're at, where we're going. Um, she's gone through a really rough time. I did not have as hard a time as she did because I immediately withdrew, as most people know and had to, for our own security, did not tell people where I was going. Uh, Becky has done the same thing, and um, that's what's saving the wives that are out there. They're having to pull back and, and go find it a little bit. But she is still putting some of that information out through their brand. She was in court this morning, and I know she did have a few people. There's not a lot of people that are uh, coming to support us. In fact, I've only had one person go to court with me twice uh, out of all of these times. Uh, we did make sure she had people in court with her this morning. And I believe he received 30 months in prison with three years probation. Um, I'm waiting for that to totally be confirmed, but I believe that's what he's received. He has already served 15 months, so he will be transferred to the federal prison, uh, Sheridan for the remaining 15 months, and maybe it might be lessened, not sure, for good time or good behavior. Um, and we're waiting for that question to be answered. That's why I'm hesitant. So that's a maximum 15 months in Sheridan, and then he'll be released for three years probation. So he's getting close to the end of what they're doing. I do not think they've put any stipulations on him, but I have no clue on what they've said. Right. Um, I was not in court. I do know that she's doing fine and Michael is doing fine. Uh, they've got people that, that we know are safe that are making sure that cause she's hanging in there right now. Um, and Michael is okay right now as well. He's been uh, working as a cook in the prison. And I know the judge did say, you know, good job as a, you know, he's doing a good job as a cook. And, you know, was complimentary and did some hunky things as well, but not like what's going on in uh, Nevada. The Oregon judges are a little bit more respectful mm -hmm. from what I saw. Um, and they are a little bit more respectful. You just are not getting bottles of the presumptions and assumptions uh, from the attorneys. It's the attorneys people need to be talking about, not the judges. Right. Well, the judges are attorneys, you have the DAs that are attorneys, you have the defense that are attorneys, you have the prosecution that are attorneys, you have the lawmakers that are attorneys. Yeah, I would say that the topic does need to be on the attorneys, for sure. Right. It definitely. I did find that case. Okay. Uh, it says, a statute is not law. That's warning, F-L-O-U-R-N-O-Y, versus First National Bank of Shreveport. 197LA, 1067,3SO, 2D, pages 244 and 248. Um, Can you repeat that one more time for the audience? A, a statute is not law. Learning, F-L-O-U-R-N-O-Y, versus First National Bank of Shreveport, 197LA, 1067,3SO, 2D, 244, 248. Um, there are some more. Uh, you know, a code is not law. That is self. Uh, Ray self versus Ray. R H A Y is the second Ray. Um, you know, it's a point in fact in law. There's quite a few cases that say the statutes are not the law of the land. Right. Uh, there was another one. 
U.S. Supreme Court decision, all those rules and regulations are for government authorities only, not human creators in accordance in God's law. All codes, rules, and regulations are unconstitutional and lacking due process. This is Rodriguez versus Ray Donovan. U.S. Department of Labor, 769F.2D, comma, 1344, comma, 1348, from 1985. So that's quite recent decision. So there's quite a few that are coming out that the statutes do not apply to them. They apply to the employees of the United States government. Mm -hmm. And the entities, I will look that up to give you some more information on the entity here in just a few minutes. Excellent about the bill for that one. Wonderful, wonderful. That would be great. Okay, so I'm going to ask the question just in case, um, because uh, I'm going I'm going to be the uh, devil in the room, if you will, Lori, for just a moment, uh, so that because I know that other individuals um, probably have asked this question, and then that way I can ask you the question and you can um, you can answer it or finalizing uh, the time. So I'm the devil in the room right now. Did you fail to let people know about Tom's case because of any nefarious reason or was it because you had to remain on the private side as you were explaining earlier that there are some things that you just cannot put out to the public at that point? I definitely had to remain private uh, due to the research that I had done and to the people I was uh, communicating with. There are some things that I'm still remaining private on, but now that Thomas has made this decision, I can speak a little bit more. Um, there was a time where he had to make a decision to stand one way or another. It had to be his decision and not mine the one that has to go before the court, and he made his decision uh, based on, one, his health was a major factor, and two, what he was being uh, told by various voices around him, mm -hmm. i.e. little voices of lawyers and judges. I'm not going into crazy talk. We're all adults, and I really hope people that are listening act as adults. I'm not trying to get onto anybody or play games. Um, it's just very complicated when you've done the research not to offend people, not to get upset, um, and to present it in a, in a one professional manner because we need to be actually professional towards each other or uh, courteous or respectful and honorable. And it's very hard when I guess the best one is my people die for lack of knowledge mm -hmm. and they're killing themselves in jail for their lack of knowledge and it's hard to explain to people when you know even your own husband um, had to take the stand the way he did and a lot of people will understand that. I'm taking it very hard. Um, I think I'm doing a lot better if you think so too. I, I mean you talked to me the other night, I'm taking it a lot better, mm -hmm. but these are the facts and these are the choices in life and this is the direction that it's going. Um, I'm still fighting. I'm not stopping. Um, the truth is, is what I've always uh, tried to speak and um, I hope that we can educate people and give them the knowing and the knowledge that they need so that this doesn't happen to another. Right. Right, um, absolutely. I'm going to read ahead. this statement real quick that explains the entity that I keep talking about. Okay. This is from Congressional Record, June 13, 1967, pages 15641 through 15646. A citizen of the United States is civilly dead entity operating as a co-trustee and a co-beneficiary of the PCP, that's the Public Charitable Trust, comma, the Constructive Subsidy Trust of the U.S. Inc. under the 14th Amendment, which upholds the debt of the USA and U.S. Inc. Now, 
In that statement, that sent me on a journey because I was aware of the empathy and I was aware of the trust. Um, and I wanted to tread on that lightly because a lot of people have done a lot of silly, incompetent things and have gotten themselves in trouble. And that's not what I was trying to do. My intent, my intent was to find the truth and to present the truth and facts to the court. So, first thing that I heard was, a citizen of the United States is civilly dead entity operating as a co-trustee and co-beneficiary. One, Thomas is not dead. Right. Two, that says he's not a citizen of the United States. And the first thing they ask you in court, and they ask you several times, are you a citizen of the United States? Or they'll yes, ask, I, are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, they ask you both ways. Yes. Correct. So by this, absolutely not. Because he's not dead in any way, shape, or form. Right. He's fully alive. The second is, this entity is a co-trustee and a co-beneficiary. You cannot be both right. in a trust. So this was set up this way by Congress, and it tells you straight in there to manage the debt of the United States, which by the 13th Amendment you cannot question. So that puts the judge, I'm going to play devil's advocate here, which I hate doing. You have to keep that judge in honor where they're aware of these trusts and these benefits, these, these, these entities. Right. You can't question it. But you can prove it. It doesn't say you can't prove that it exists mm -hmm. and that you're not it. They're asking you, are you going to step in for another? Like you said, it has to be if someone that steps in for another. There are other terms that might seem racist, but it's, there are many terms around. Will you step in for another? Mm -hmm. In the IRS, when you step in for another, you can also be called a, I believe it's a disassociated, I'll have to look it up. You're like a disassociated or a disknown, unknown entity is basically what it means. Mm -hmm. I'll find the correct term for you. And um, what they're doing is saying when you step in for another, you don't even exist. These courts know you're alive. They know you're alive. A lot of people keep saying that the, the, the capitalist dominion is, is your dead person. The entity is dead, not you. The judge really well knows you're alive. So when you're standing up saying that you're dead, they're laughing at you. They know you're alive. And that's very hard for most people to understand. We are getting it backwards. Mm -hmm. And I told the judge, you know, I know you know I'm alive. Um, I am not that entity, and Thomas is not that entity, and she did assign that attorney to the entity. Um, and go and look. The, the attorneys pretty much can only deal with trusts and trustees, which Thomas has never gotten the banking and the accounting on this trust. If he's a 50% co-trustee and co-beneficiary, then... We owe some money to the IRS, each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. And where are the statements? And where are the audits? And, right. you know, and on and on and on and on. You cannot um, properly be responsible for an account when you have no idea what the balance and all of that is. So, Well, you can as a disregarded entity. That's what it's called in the IRS. Right. But you are not that entity. And a disregarded entity by the IRS is someone that steps in to a corporation that's run by others and doesn't have a say. It's the same thing. Um, a disregarded entity is a business type that is a separate form from the owner for liability purposes, but it is the same as the owner for tax purposes. That is, it pays taxes to the owner's personal income tax return but it's not liable for anything. Um, it, it's something that we all need to investigate. We all need to look into, and this is what's happening to each and every one of these men. It's along the lines what each and every one of us have started to learn. But one thing we have to remember is they have put restrictions upon themselves that there's only so much they can answer, and there will be a path that we can ask these questions. But I could not ask questions about the 
debt of the United States, or excuse me, the USA, or the US Inc. Um, is that the same to USA and US Inc. that's in the 13th Amendment? If it is a USA and the US Inc. that are owned by Congress that is handling the debt, then there's a question for the court, is that covered by the Constitution or is it separate because Congress owns those corporations? It's not the Republic that we were told. We right. Now, are question. you talking about the 14th Amendment? The 14th and the 13th. Right. But by the 14th, uh, does hold the debt of the United States. Um, and it cannot be questioned. Thomas has always said it cannot be questioned. Um, and they put it right in the congressional records. So this is the entity that I keep talking about, just for people that want to know, why does she keep talking about this entity, and where does this come from? It comes from congressional records. Mm -hmm. Congress gave these courts their authority, and they cannot question congressional records because it is the power that created them. Congress is their creator, like our creator, whether you have faith or not, the one that is and was and always will be created us. Mm -hmm. We created Congress, and Congress created the courts. So they cannot subvert something that Congress has done. It's that is their daddy. Right. You know? Right, exactly. All right. Uh, is there anything else you would like to add? And maybe we, we can... Uh, uh, join together again and do another interview and maybe go further into some of these documents um, on a on a different uh, evening and uh, touch base and, and really start digging into the public and the private um, and the situations. But we also understand we wanted to get it out there that um, the information about what is going on with Tom so that the listeners and the followers know what is going on with Tom. And also, we wanted to get the information out about Michael Emery. And um, yeah. prayers, everybody uh, who believes in prayer, please make sure that um, you pray for these individuals. You know, uh, another concern that I have, Lori, and this is just a personal concern because I've been seeing it happen time and time again, that they agree to a plea bargain and then when it comes to the point of um, the day of uh, the judge says well you know that's what they promised but I don't have to go by that and then they're not um, the judge is not doing that or honoring that agreement so what day um, what is the date that Tom um, is supposed to be going before the court uh, for the uh, sentencing uh as of now it's october 18th he is to be sentenced okay. um the funny thing is i've got the paperwork in thomas was controlling when the what was happening um <laughs> until he signed that paperwork um october 18th is when he's going before and the key thing that i can say to everybody living through this is we all have our own opinions we need to stop getting our knickers in a twist we need to start listening to each other. The egos need to be dropped. Um, it's very hard. You have got to trust someone. You have to. And if you don't stop with all the nonsense and the games and start listening and actually doing some of the research, which Rod Cross on YouTube has one that's called Manifest Station, two words that everyone needs to see, um, that will give you a basis from Congress what happened. That's manifest station on YouTube. Um, if we don't start growing up and stop going after our own agendas and go after what is, what is is what Congress has done, what the courts are doing, and how things operate. If you can't go to the basis from the foundation and you can't discuss that with each other, then we're lost. Mm -hmm. Like I said, our people will die for lack of knowledge. And almost everyone I've spoken to at these court cases refuses to listen. They're too afraid. They're scared. And they're great people. 
they will face reality and actually do the research. Great. They're going to the court and they're getting upset because they don't understand how the court is being run and what's actually going on in there. And they're getting mad at the judge when they should be getting mad at either the, 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 the man that's being held prisoner or the attorney. A judge is only doing what she wants to do and tell the assumptions and presumptions have been objected to. So we can't get mad at the judge. We wouldn't get mad at if the attorney or that prisoner were not standing up for themselves. And they can do that. Um, and I've seen it happen. I've done it myself in Oregon. I know it happens. And you don't do it with fear. You just do it. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got to grow up. We've got to start listening to each other. Uh, we've got to quit being picky and petty. We've got too many uh, informants or people that don't believe a certain way or telling people it's their faith. This is what I tell the attorney. I don't want to believe anything that I've learned. I don't want to live in that world. I don't want my child to live in that world. This is the world he's paid to work in, and he does it for profit. This is his world. He goes in and asks to walk on water in their admiralty courts. They're the ones that go in and claim that people are dead or that play with dead entities. Or the strange things that you hear about courts, the judges, the lawyers, the prosecutors, Congress, they're the ones that live in the psycho world of legalese and law and the craziness. We live in reality. You can pinch yourself and you can go to the person in front of you and tell them that you love them if they're not locked up. That's what's important. Not what's going on in these courts. When you know what's going on in these courts, and you can stand up and tell them, that's not what's true, and that's not reality, and know how to tell them it's not reality, then we win. Mm -hmm. but, but all the fighting, and beating up on cops, or beating up on somebody because they said something you didn't like, or beating up on someone because they're doing something you don't want to do. And boy, you know there's people that are doing things that make me so angry. I want to go out and mouth off and I keep my mouth shut. It's not going to help anybody out. And right. it's not going to help us move forward. Right. What's right is standing up for the people that are being wrong in the manner that they're being wrong. Going to them behind the scenes and dealing with the issue, saying, here's why you're wrong in a respectful manner and both of you listening and sitting down and looking at the facts, stop going to the Republican Party, the Democratic Party, President Trump, Roger Stone, all of these petitions that you're putting out. You're petitioning a building called the White House when you should be petitioning the office of the president. Think about it. You're sending a position to a building. Mm -hmm. Come on, people. This is what I'm talking about. I've done it myself. Wake up, start getting along, start talking to those people that you think are crazy, and ask them where you can read it for yourself in the congressional record, or where can you read it in the court cases? Where can you read it in the Bible? Because if you know the importance of the Bible or the con, then you can know the truth. And when you stop fighting the Muslims and you start fighting the Satanists, then you win. Because that's where it's at. They hide themselves by turning you against your brother. And anyone that knows what I'm talking about, that's turning you against your brother to fight so that Satan can come in and stab you both in the back and take both your souls. Um, I know that offended a lot of people, but you're a grown-up. Go do the research. Look at it honestly. And you'll understand what I'm saying. And that's, that's kind of what I wanted to say. And I hope that gets to a lot of people that have tried to harm each other. It's, it's not worth it. Your soul is more important to me and to a lot more of the absolute saints that have helped me out along this journey that without them a lot of things wouldn't have happened and I want to thank the people that have helped me out um, they will always remain unna unnamed but they will always remain as saints to me and that's, that's kind of how I feel well that is uh, wonderful to hear and Lori uh, if anybody wants to write Tom or get a hold of Tom do you have an address for him for them to be if able they, to write him. If they go to the Lane County Jail site, I will try to get it right now. Um, he's at Lane County Jail right now. He may possibly 
they moved to um, the Sheridan prison since they have a plea agreement. Uh, there's rumors of that. I do not know. Okay, so the Lane County Jail is where he's at right now, and that's in Oregon, everyone. That's in Eugene, Oregon. I'm trying to find the information out on that. But it's Eugene, Oregon, Lane County Jail. Uh, that address is 211 East 7th Avenue. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the wrong one. Hold on. And by the way, the Lane County Jail is listed as a political organization and office. <laughs> no surprise uh, there. I know. Um, my computer's really slow right now. Okay, so everyone, while she is looking that up, um, we, if you want to, Tom does need to receive mail, and he is in Lane County, Oregon, and that is Eugene, Oregon, correct, Lori? Yes, uh, they need his full name and his inmate number. Um, which is Thomas Robert Lacabera, not his stage name, Lacabera Stewart. It's Thomas Robert Lacabera. He's in Lane County Adult Corrections, 101 West 5th Avenue, Eugene, Oregon, 97401-2695. Now, you need to go to the Lane County, Oregon website. You can find Tom's uh, number there. The reason why you need to go there is you need to get the rules for the mail. There's quite a few rules, and uh, they do send mail back. Don't be offended by that. They're doing that to everyone. There will be times, like the time when we went private, they sent everybody's mail back. Um, it's just something you have to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, I've played this a lot different than most people. Like I said, a play is a word that I'm using because this is a court. It's all an act. It's, it's all a game with them, and uh, I'm not playing. Mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, sorry, I've gotten off the game board. I'm not playing. So you've got to go and look at their rules to send a letter. Don't be afraid of it. Uh, stop being afraid. These are just people. Don't be intimidating. Don't be ugly to them. They have to look themselves in the mirror, and at some point they're going to have to face their creator, mm -hmm. and more than anything, I pity them. So, um, I don't feel sorry for them. I pity them. Um, you know, this is the world they want for their children. Uh, they have to answer to themselves, to their children, to their wives, to their husbands. Why do I have to be rude to them? They, they've got to look themselves in the mirror, and I don't know how they do that. You know? So, don't be afraid of Right, Tom? He does need to hear it. It, it helps him greatly. Uh, if things get returned, try again. Go and look at the rules. The same thing with all the other men, especially I know that Jason Patrick is up in uh, Portland. Uh, I know his mail has slowed down, and Maureen has been great trying to get him to do that. Uh, Michael's going to be in Sheridan. He's going to need mail. Um, there's quite a few of these political prisoners. If you know a politi political prisoner that we are not mentioning, please send them mail. They need it. Uh, it's hard, and uh, there's, many of them are taking a stand that you don't have uh, the stamina to do, or maybe you do and you haven't been put in that position, thank God. So, let's write to them. Right. Uh, if you can put money on their books, that helps them out as well. Uh, it takes a minimum $50 a week. They have to buy toilet paper somehow. It's not provided. Uh, phone calls, I know Tom and I limit the phone calls to about 30 to $40 a month. Um, some people get, that, that allows us two phone calls a week. Um, so, it, it, these things will help these families. All the other families that are coming out for all this crazy stuff, that little bit does help them. Uh, I'm not saying for Tom, I'm saying for whoever you choose, and if you look at the guys that aren't out in the media the most, they probably need the help the most, and they don't ask. Um, they're the ones that really need assistance. I'm, I can guarantee it. Um, Tom and I are just fortunate that he has
had gone into the media and that we have uh, a voice still that we can get out there and can uh, get some of this information out for those that can't. And just imagine those that can't get information out to the public and are sitting there and may just have a girlfriend or nobody. Mm -hmm. um, we do need to contact them, write them letters, and it's very important. Uh, most of those prisoners in there are in there because they do not have the knowledge and are being railroaded and treated absolutely horribly. No medical. Food is bad. In fact, we're promises the food is unfit for human consumption. His health is very poor right now, as well as many of the other men. And uh, there are lawsuits now going on for the food that's in that prison. Um, and I think that was the same thing that happened in uh, Peru mm -hmm. at that facility as well. I think now they're allowed to have oranges uh, or fruit once a week. Um, so this life is not fun. It's not something that anyone wants to go through. And if you have fear of sending a letter or if you have fear of, of sending some support to people, then let your chains rest lightly because you're a part of the problem and not the solution. And no one hates you, but you have to look yourself in the mirror. And um, we've got to stand together and we've got to stop the bickering at some point. I know I suck up all my anger that I have of uh, what I'm seeing. So help these guys out or help any other political prisoner out that you can so that we can stop this motion and educate yourself. All right. Well, Lori, I want to thank you for joining me this evening and updating all of the listeners as to what's going on with Tom and Michael Emery, and as well as explaining um, uh, the private situation to where uh, people understand why it was that that information was not getting out about Tom. And right. um, I really do appreciate your time. And everybody, please remember write these gentlemen and um if you if you feel it on your heart send money to them put money on their books i can tell you that just because the the quote unquote government says that they spend all this money to keep the prisons operating um and this is not just tom i'm talking about i'm talking about other individuals that are not even in the patriot movement that i know about their cases they don't even get hygiene products like they're supposed to. So where is all the money going? It's it's going into the pockets. It's surely not going to take care of the prisoners. So with that, just remember, once you've done all to stand, the Bible says just stand. And these individuals stood, and um, I will keep you updated the best of my ability. And as always, watch your backs, check your facts, simplify Dallas, and have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Lori, for joining me tonight. You're welcome. Thank you.